Marcos from Barcelona, but he could be anyone, anywhere. What is about to happen to him occurs daily in offices and homes all over the world. Part inside the printer has failed, and the manufacturer sends Marcos to technical support. El meu tècnic ha fa un diagnòstic, un diagnòstic previ, però aquest diagnòstic ja són 15 euros més IVA. Segurament serà difícil encontrar les peces per a poder reparar-la. Realment reparar-la no li surt molt a compte. Que reparar-la parlem d'un 110, 120 euros. Tiene impressores des de 39 euros. Jo t'aconsellaria que que miressis impressores noves. Així que sens dubte jo em compraria una nova, eh? It's no coincidence that all three shopkeepers suggest buying a new printer. If he agrees, Marcos will become yet another victim of planned obsolescence, the secret mechanism at the heart of our consumer society. Our role in life seems to be just to consume things with credit, to borrow money, to buy things we don't need. Nous vivons dans une société dominée par une économie de croissance dont la logique est non pas croître pour satisfaire les besoins, mais croître pour croître. So if the consumer does not purchase, you know, the economy is not going to grow. Planned obsolescence. The desire on the part of a consumer to own something a little newer, a little sooner than is necessary. This film will reveal how planned obsolescence has defined our lives ever since the 1920s, when manufacturers started shortening the lives of products to increase consumer demand. Also hat man sich gedacht, dann beschränken wir einfach die Lebensdauer auf 1000 Stunden. We will find out how designers and engineers were made to adopt new values and objectives. Was back to the drawing board and come out with something that was more fragile. They time those things. They time them. So when you finally paid for them, they're used up. A new generation of consumers has started challenging manufacturers. Is it possible to imagine a viable economy without planned obsolescence, without its impact on the environment? Posterity will never forgive us. Posterity will suddenly find out about the throwaway lifestyles of people in the advanced countries. Welcome to Livermore, California, home of the longest burning light bulb in the world. My name's Lynn Owens, and I am chairman of the Light Bulb Committee. It was in 1972 when we discovered that the light bulb that was hanging in the fire station was a significant light bulb. The light bulb at the Livermore Fire Station has been burning continuously since 1901. Ironically, the bulb has already outlasted two webcams. In 2001, when the bulb was 100 years old, the people of Livermore threw a big birthday party, American style. I think we were hoping if we would get 200 people, we'd be happy. And we ended up with eight or 900 people showing up. Do you think that anybody would sing happy birthday to a light bulb? Well, we didn't think they would, but they did. <laughs> The origin of the bulb was, it was produced in a town called Shelby, Ohio, back around 1895 and put together by some 
very interesting ladies that I have some pictures of and some gentlemen that, that invested in the company. The filament was invented by Adolphe Chalet. He invented his filament to last. Why does his filament last? I don't know. It's a secret that he made and that died with him. Chalet's formula for a long-lasting filament is not the only mystery in the history of the light bulb. A much bigger secret is how the humble light bulb became the first victim of planned obsolescence. Weihnachten 1924 war ein ganz besonderer Tag. In einem Hinterzimmer in Genf trafen sich einige Herren in Nadelstreifenanzügen, um einem geheimen Plan nachzugehen. Sie gründeten das erste weltweite Kartell, das sich zum Ziel setzte, die Glühbirnenproduktion der gesamten Länder zu kontrollieren und den Kuchen namens Weltmarkt unter sich aufzuteilen. Dieses Kartell hat den Namen Phoebus. Phoebus included the main light bulb manufacturers in Europe and the United States and even faraway colonies in Asia and Africa. Das Ziel ist gewesen, Patente auszutauschen, die Produktion zu kontrollieren und vor allem aber den Verbraucher zu kontrollieren. Es ist umso besser für diese Firmen, wenn der Verbraucher regelmäßig Glühlampen kauft und wenn die Glühlampen lange brennen, ist das ein ökonomischer Nachteil. Initially, manufacturers strived for a long lifespan for their bulbs. On October 21st, 1871, numerous experiments resulted in the production of a small unique map of comparatively enormous resistance. The filament being under conditions of great stability, after the Thomas Edison's first commercial bulb, on sale by 1881, lasted 1,500 hours. By 1924, when the Phoebus cartel was founded, manufacturers proudly advertised lifespans of up to 2,500 hours and stressed the longevity of their bulbs. Also hat man sich bei Phoebus gedacht, ähm, dann beschränken wir einfach die Lebensdauer dieser einzelnen Glühbirnen auf 1000 Stunden. 1925 wird ein entsprechendes Komitee gegründet, das 1000 Hour Life Committee, was sich zum Ziel setzt, auf technischer Basis die Lebensdauer der Glühlampen auf diese Brenndauer zu beschränken. More than 80 years later, Helmut Hüge, an historian from Berlin, uncovers proof of the committee's activities hidden in the internal documents of the founding members of the cartel, such as Philips in Holland. Osram in Germany and Compagnie de Lomme in France. Here we have a cartel document that states the average life of lamps for general lighting service must not be guaranteed, published or offered for another value than 1,000 hours. Under pressure from the cartel, member companies conducted experiments to create a more fragile bulb that would conform with the new 1,000-hour rule. Bulb production was monitored rigorously to make sure cartel members complied. Eine Maßnahme bestand beispielsweise darin, einen Prüfstand zu errichten, in dem viele kleine Sockel zu finden sind, in die dann wiederum einzelne Exemplare aus verschiedenen Produktionsreihen eingeschraubt wurden und Firmen wie Osram haben dann genauestens protokolliert, wie lange diese Lampen brannten. Phoebus enforced its rules through an elaborate bureaucracy. Members were fined heavily if their monthly life reports were off the mark. Hier haben wir eine Straftabelle aus dem Jahr 1929, die genau zeigt, wie viel Schweizer Franken Strafe für 1000 verkaufte Glühbirnen die Mitglieder des Kartells zahlen müssen, wenn die Lampen länger halten als zum Beispiel 1500 Stunden. As planned obsolescence took effect, 
lifespans fell steadily. In just two years, they dropped from 2,500 hours to less than 1,500 hours. By the 1940s, the cartel had reached its goal. 1,000 hours had become the standard lifespan for bulbs. I can see how this was very tempting in 1932. I think at the time, sustainability was actually substantially less of an issue because I don't think they looked at the planet as being one with finite uh, amount of resources. They looked at it as from an abundance perspective. Ironically, the light bulb has always been a symbol for ideas and innovation, and yet it's one of the early and best examples of planned obsolescence. In the following decades, inventors filed dozens of patents for new light bulbs, including one lasting 100,000 hours. None of them reached the general market. Offiziell hat es ja Phobos eigentlich nie gegeben, wenn auch diese Spuren der Öffentlichkeit nie ganz verborgen gewesen sind. Die Strategie dahinter ist, sich in bestimmten Zeitabständen immer wieder umzubenennen. Dann heißt es mal internationales Elektrizitätskartell, dann mal wieder irgendein anderer Name. Ähm, entscheidend ist, dass diese Idee als Institution natürlich weiter besteht. In Barcelona, Marcos hasn't followed the advice of the shopkeepers to replace his printer. He's determined to repair it and has found somebody on the internet who has discovered what has actually happened to his printer. It's the dirty little secret of inkjet printers. I tried to print a document and it said parts